three, two, one. Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today I want to show you how to make a growl bass with Zenlet Sub Effects in Ardor and also do some funky processing, especially multiband processing using Ardor without creating a bunch of external buses and using some neat internal routing trickery. So, the basic thing, what is a growl bass? I've tried for many years to build a definition in my head what a growl bass is. And I can only say two things. A growl bass needs to have a wide frequency spectrum, so a single sine wave won't do the trick. In contrast to a Rees bass, for example, which can be very tamed with a Lopez filter and be very narrow in frequency range, a growl bass rather needs to be wide. And it has to go into the mids, if not even into the highs. So that's the first thing. We need a wide band signal. And the second thing is a growl bass needs to utilize vowel-like sounds. So it kind of tries to imitate human voice in a way, but in a twisted robotic fashion. And that can be achieved with multiple things. It can be achieved with frequency modulation, with zero order hold resampling, so basically decimation. It can be achieved with ring modulation, vocoding, formant filters, equalizing and playing with the filter peaks and throts, automating that. All bunch of different stuff can be used to achieve this effect. And that is why there's a million ways to make a growl bass. So today I'm gonna make an FM growl bass. We're gonna use a single carrier and a single modulator. We're gonna make them produce a growly vowel-like tone and then we're gonna do some multiband processing. We're gonna split the signal in multiple paths for low frequencies, medium frequencies, and high frequencies, and I'm gonna, we're gonna process all of them separately, and then we're going to mix back together all of that to have a stereo signal back then usable for our mix. All right, let's kick it in. I think you meant kick it off. So here's my Ardor session. I have Bodline here that will provide us with a nice spectrum analysis. And I have Zenit SubFX here. So this is the interface. This is the new interface called Zenfusion. Uh, before I'm gonna launch this, I'm gonna root my MIDI keyboard. Yeah, so I can play it without moving my mouse around. All right. So this is the main interface of Zenit SubFX. Uh, we're in the browser right now. I'm gonna go to the AdSynth because it's the one that allows us to use frequency modulation. And now I'm going to go for the voice one. And the voice one is going to be our modulator. So it's going to be silent. You see we have amplitude and the amplitude is going to be zero. Now if I press a key, nothing happens. But the voice is on, and that's important because we can use it for modulation. Now if I go to voice 2, I can enable that. You can hear it makes a sound. Now if I go to the modulation tab for the voice 2, we can enable phase modulation. And in this drop-down menu here, we have normal, which is basically the internal uh, mod oscill modulation oscillator that is built into that voice, or we can use another voice. And that gives us more options because we, with the internal modulation oscillator, we don't have access to filters, LFOs, and other weird things or noise sources that we can use in voice one, basically. So we have mod one. So now voice two is making sounds and is being modulated by voice one. The voice one amplitude, the global settings, no, the voice settings, voice amplitude is zero, voice two is it's louder. Isn't it too quiet a bit? Now if I play softly, it's gonna make, uh, you can see that we have harmonic content change around. So I'm going to go to my modulation settings, and here we have the amplitude settings. So this is how deep the modulation is. 
I can move this in real time. And we don't want any velocity sensing. And oddly enough, you have to turn this all the way up to disable the function of velocity sensing. Otherwise, we still have some velocity sensing. We can go to the global and amplitude. Maybe, no, voice. No, no, global. Where is it? It's not there. Bug reported. Forget it. Maybe we have it in the part settings. E velocity sensing. Yeah, here it is. So we have to go to the part settings to disable velocity sensing for the whole instrument. Now I can go back to add synth. We are at voice two. Uh, that's got pretty loud. All right, so now we have two sine waves working. If you watched my previous uh, introduction to FM synthesis video, you know what that means. We can do lots of different sounds, but we want to make a growl bass. So I'm going to go for the oscillator and make it a triangle wave. Remember, this is the, the wave that is being modulated. Now, if I go to the voice one, we have the wave that is modulating. If I change this, we hear a much bigger change in the sound. We can try some other distortion. Maybe a Lopez filter. or a sine wave filter, which is crazy and does some awesome things. Now, if I change the frequency, the pitch of the voice, that's our growly growl. It's not perfect yet, but we're gonna sculpt it from here. One thing I wanna change is go to global filter and ramp up the cutoff. You can hear we have much more high frequency content. It's much brighter now, bites more. Because this is by default a little bit closed. We could use that creatively, but not right now. So let's go back to the voice. Now the cool thing, because we are using separate voice in AdSynth for modulation, we can use filters. So we have filter, we can enable filter for our voice. And that makes some pretty crazy ass sounds already. We have a notch filter now. If I press on this tab, we can see a graph showing us the frequency response of our filter. Please note that we're not filtering the carrier waveform, that is the sound that is directly heard. We are filtering the modulator waveform, the, the waveform that is influencing our carrier. If we apply this filtering to the carrier waveform, which is what we directly hear, the, re the result would be very straightforward and the listener could clearly tell what is happening. But because we're doing that to the modulator waveform, the modulating voice, uh, it's not obvious what's going on because we're shaping the waveform that is then shaping the waveform that we hear. So the results are much more interesting that way. This is a little bit too narrow. So, well, basically we get similar effects as you would with a wavetable oscillator, um, but it's synthesized in real time. However, we need a way to control this with automation because a static sound like that isn't going to do us much good. We need a way 
to change this during the note to give life to this sound, to give motion to the sound. And macro learn comes with a helping hand. There's a new feature implemented where you can, we have 16 slots from zero to 15, and you can bind up to four controls. And then in Ardor, when you go to the automation menu, processor automation, Zen sub effects, we have all the 16 slots and we can automate this. We can record it. If you're performing live, you can bind this to MIDI CC or you can directly learn uh, to MIDI CC. However, I'm not yet sure how that works because I had some trouble. So I I went like overriding the internal Zen sub effects CC, MIDI CC learning mechanism and I just binded it with the hub plugin host like Carla or Ardor. Anyway, that's technical detail. So what do we have to do? Well, there are two modes, normal learn, unused slot, macro learn, active slot. It doesn't matter because we want to learn one control to one slot. And we select them by pressing this arrow. And whichever one is active, we're gonna learn to. Maybe I'm gonna go with macro learn so we know which slot we're using. Then we can name the slot and then we can add an automation track and control this. So let's go for add synth. And I'm going to enable the learn mode. And I'm going just to wiggle my cutoff. That's it. Now if I go to macro learn, I will disable learn because if I touch anything else, it's gonna be assigned. Uh, ah, not this. And now you can see our slot zero has param part zero, which is the first instrument, kit zero, add synth parameters, voice parameters, zero voice filter, bass frequency. So this is the per the name of the control we have this assigned to. We can also drag this little bar here and we can test out, test out our macro. And this is going to move, show us the current value when we assign the automation. So you can see we have a little function here that we can define. We have the minimum filter cutoff value, which is 31 hertz and the maximum 32,000. And this is way above 20,000 because the filter can have a long, um, gentle roll off. So if you can go way up high, you can go so high that the roll off doesn't affect the sound at all. And sometimes you want that. All righty, so let's call this, uh, I'm gonna type now, notch, because this is our filter, notch filter. All right, let's test this in action. So let's maybe put some notes. I'm gonna go to D, press D for draw. Now I can draw a region and then I can draw a note inside the region and it will sound. So let's just play this. Now here we have a note, which is very boring, but it does the job. Now I'm gonna go for A, A, sorry, automation, menu, processor automation, sense of effects, which is the instrument plugin. Slot one, which is, which is the slot, the automation slot, this one, we would call it notch, but that name won't be, you know, it won't be passed over to, to the DAW, unfortunately. And the names have to be fixed. And now we have this. I can go with play. So we have the automation read out. And you can see that it does indeed have an effect. Right now, there is an issue that the um, cutoff frequency isn't logarithmic, and it should be. I already reported that. Mark said it's a problem and, and it should be fixed in some time. Right now, we need to um, just adapt our automation curves to, to better utilize the, the space that we have. So, I, you know. Now you can draw your sweet automation curve. All righty, this is our basic growl bass, uh, which is extremely simple. We have, we're just playing with the notch filter on the modulating oscillator, uh, on the modulating voice. However, we can do much more. We can, for example, play with the FM modulation, sorry, PM modulation depth, so the the amount of modulation we apply, uh, which we'll do, because that's quite fun to do, and it can give us some cool sounds, especially when you combine different parameters and play with automation, 
amazing things occur. And we, if we need, and when we add some distortion later, uh, it can create even more fun sounds. And we can also automate the amount of distortion in and out. Um, this is fun. Alrighty, so we are in the voice two. We're going to modulation amplitude right now. And we want to automate this guy here. So I'm going to macro learn. I'm going to select the second macro slot, enable learn. Going back here, and I'm, now I'm gonna wiggle this, this, yeah. Well, why is it so slow? I don't know. Is it learned? Voice one, PFM volume. Alrighty, yeah, learning Q2. Disabling this. Yep, I think I have, oh, I have fine enabled. Why? I'm not holding control or anything like that. Something got stuck. Bug reported. Okay, I'm going to call this one modulation. modulation. Ah, I could call it mod depth, maybe. And now let's add another automation track. Let's change it to play. And let's create a simple ramp. Now, I would like to be able to verify that this is working. So I'm going to switch the first track to manual. So this won't be read out and this value will be used instead. So we have only one automation track playing, so we can verify that it's working as expected. Yep. So we can see we're coming from, let's take a look at the spectrograph. We're coming from no modulation at all, which gave us our original triangle wave. And then we're slowly getting more and more until it's so much that is basically white noise. So there is a certain point that we don't want to cross because it doesn't give us any good, it's, which is roughly there. And also we don't want to go too low because that will make the sound boring and really not very fun. So this is the range that we actually want to stay in roughly. Um, we can have some fun and draw something. Now, what if we enable this first automation track? Alrighty, this, I don't like it. I think I want to start with a sting. Ah, oh, yeah. This could be a sharp sting, but I want it to be very short. Yep, so we have kind of like a noise burst. I'm gonna zoom in on this to make it's a little bit smaller. Alrighty. So you can explore this concept, uh, add different controls, make more automation and get really crazy with that. But I'm gonna leave it for now. There's a whole big world of sound design to explore, my dear. And let's go to effects. So I've gone here, the effects tab, then insertion effects. And we have a list of our effects. I'm going to enable the first one by choosing part, part one, and then I'm going to go for distortion. Now I'm going to turn down the output volume. Actually, I'm going to close this window. Maybe it will reset the fine parameter. Yep. Alright, I'm turning down the output value, which is post gain after distortion. I'm going to play this in loop. Just wanted to make sure it won't blast us away. We have a low pass filter here and a high pass filter. This is drive. We can filter before distortion or after. So we're cutting the highs and the lows off after distortion right now or before, which is pre-filtering.
that sounds a little bit like a guitar. I wonder if we can use that. Let's go with the amount, which is dry wet. No distortion. Half distortion. That's a bit too quiet. Yeah. Let's enable another one. Make it quiet. I'm gonna try a different type of distortion this time. And this is great. In the new interface, you can see the distortion function, which is fantastic because you can tell what is is doing. And before, you couldn't really tell sometimes. What is this kind of thing doing? Now you can see, limiter just limits. Sigmoid. It's weird because it's quite like the Arctangent. Oh, this is asymmetric. Let's try it. Alrighty, this is all fine and dandy, but we are lacking some very important ingredient, and that is the formant motion. How we can introduce that? Okay, we have something kind of formant-like, but because of the distortion and the harmonic mayhem that is happening, we are kind of losing that. So maybe we can introduce more of the formanty quality with a filter. Let's try a dynamic filter. The, well, well, where is it? All right, so it just didn't have the room to display correctly. So that's a dynamic filter. Let's play this and listen. <laughs> This is dry wet. That's quite loud. So, this is a Vormant filter which responds to the level, to the input level. I wonder if we can... Oh, this is LFO. I wonder if we can um, control it. Absolutely manually. This is the amount, and this is slowing out. How many filters can we have? Oh, this is the length of the sequence. No. I'm lacking a global uh, resonance parameter for the filter. Bug reported. Yeah, I think this is not the good a good path to take. Okay, so I tried playing with a dynamic formant filter. Uh, let's ditch that and instead use some uh, modulation effects. All right, let's ditch that and go with the band separation thingy. So, uh, I made uh, this thing a lot quieter. So 
So now I'm going to insert an effect that will go into that will split the signal into multiple frequency bands. There are some kind some effects like that, like the free band splitter. I'm going to go with calf x over. However, it is in the utils utilities uh, category. So if you don't met, if you don't click that, you won't see them. I'm going to use the free band one. Let's insert this, and this is our crossover, which is going, which is just you know splitting the signal at 150 hertz and 3000 into three bands. Now, if we play, we only hear the lowest band, and this is where Ardor's fantastic uh, routing capabilities come in. You can see these green green thingies right there. These are the pin connections, and now we can configure them. So if I go to pin connections, you can see we have one instance of the calf crossover plugin. It accepts one media input and two audio inputs, which is of course left and right channel. It outputs six audio inputs, so left and right for the sub, for the bass, left and right for the mids, and left and right for the highs but we have only two outputs and we need more. So I'm going to go with manual config, enabling it here, and then I can add audio out. One, two, three, and four. So we have each one so that we can root out all the audio from this plugin, which is free stereo tracks, bass, mids, and trebles. And what it does, you can see that our panner control have changed to a surround one, which is not what we actually want, and we won't use that. And we have all these green audio connections visible here. What we can do now is, for example, add a calf flanger effect. And by default, it inserts free Okay, I'm going to move it above the fader. And you can see that we have three instances of the effect running. I'm going to right click, go to pin connections, and you can see, yep, we have three instances. We don't want three, we just want one. I'm going to manual config. I'm going to remove two instances. And now I want this effect to be applied to high frequencies only. So, I'm going to root the high left and high right here and root them out to the outputs, right? But this will mean that all the other data is lost. So I will drag this to just maintain the data so the lows and mids will be passed through unaffected and the highs will be passed through the flanger effect. How does it sound? Right now, kind of weird because, well, we don't have the, the signals properly mixed back. So we need to fix that. And I figure out it's the best way right now is to use a mixer plugin. When you type in a mixer, you have various options and depending on what plugins you have installed. And there are, for example, plugins like Stereo 2 Mono Mixer, which will have two inputs for every in output, so that won't do because we need three inputs for every output. However, there is AMS Mixer for channels, but it's mono. And there is AMS Mix Stereo Mixer for channels, that will do. Let's use this one. I'm going to insert this plugin, and we have our mixer control. So we have four inputs, and we can pan them left and right. All righty. Let's see. Okay, and this is not what we want. Because this is still not what we want because it has only four inputs and two outputs and we need six inputs and four outputs. All right, let's see. Actually, okay, we have the AMS Stereo Mixer eight channels, but we can just go with the mono version with four channels with two instances, right? Inserting that one. Okay, we have four channels. Huh. 
All right. We have six instances running. You can see it's crazy. I'm going to pin connections. Yeah, let's go with manual config. I'm going to reduce this back to two instances. All right. Now we have too much audio outputs. We need to get back to stereo. So I'm going to remove the four excessive audio outputs and we have just left and right. And now we have left bass, right bass. So I'm going to root it here. Left mids, it's there, okay. Right mids, let's go here. Left highs, go here. And right highs, go here. Let me stretch the window so we can see the connections better. So this one uh, shouldn't go anywhere. Right clicking it will disconnect it. So we have bass, left and right, split. Mids, left and right, split. Highs, left and right, split. All of these got mixed in two instances and fell back to stereo output. I can close it. You can see our panner has got back to stereo. And if I play this, it works. What's happening? Well, it works. What's happening? We have a well. phaser applied only to the high frequency. And with this crossover filter, we can we can also listen to just our highs. We can also listen to just our highs or the mids or the bass. Or the mids. We need the sub bass for this one. Or the bass. Maybe let's add it right now we need before the sub I forget for about it. One. Let's go here let's add it to Zenith right Synth Effects, go with it. Add Synth, let's and another neat trick, we can activate another AdSynth voice by middle clicking trick, here. You can see that can this another voice the third voice has lit up. Middle -clicking here. Now you if I click it, you can see it's on. The third if I voice has middle click lit again, up. it's on. Now if I click it, you can see so you can it's on. enable and disable voices and again, instruments with middle clicking right here. By the way, this is something I requested and was implemented. With middle clicking right here. So we need a uh, sub bass. It was implemented. Thanks, Mark. Uh, sub. So we need a uh, sub bass. Okay. So, uh, I can't hear uh, everything sub. because I have. Okay. So, I have disabled uh, all the voices. Let's listen to just the sub bass. Let's listen Let's to Let's disable just the first, the second voice. The sub bass. Which will leave us only Let's with the sub the first, oscillator. The second voice. Because this one is modulating which will this one. So the first voice is modulating the second. And the third one is completely independent. This is going to be our sub oscillator. And the third one is completely independent. And this way too high, as you can tell. So I'm going to voice frequency. And this way too high, as you can tell. So I'm going to voice. That's sub bass. And amplitude. That's sub bass. It needs to be loud. And amplitude. And. You can see that our distortion is taking effect because it's a and sine wave oscillator and we already have some frequency content. A lot of it, actually. And then the distorted signal go goes to the phaser and we have all the crazy things happening. Now, what if we enable our... We could also do some fun things like making this monophonic because right now I can play a chord which will sound terrible. Unless you want to play some very weird kind of music. Let's go with monophonic. Now if I press another key, it's going to sound, but only that sound will, will last. All the other keys are going to be mute. We can also enable portamento. However, I would like it very short, uh, so we can reduce the time. So it's very, very minimal. Uh, 
All righty. And that's it for sub bass. I think we have a decent amount of sub bass frequencies in this. All right. Uh, you've noticed I inserted the mixer after the fader. And that was deliberate because I want to be able to insert new plugins here um, without um, possibly messing up my connections made here. So let's just insert a reverb. I'm going to go with GX Zeta Reverb. And we have three instances, three X1. So going to pin connections. Manual config, just one instance, and I want this to operate only on the mids. So I'm going to right click on these pins, I'm going to drag in these ones, right click here, and reroute that to the mid output, and then reconnect the rest so it goes through. And we have our reverb only applied to the mid frequencies. <laughs> And you can see, even if I make it the, as broadband as possible, it only goes in the mid frequency, so it will never mess up my sub bass region and it's not going to bleed into my highs. I could also sidechain this, possibly, with something. I'm just going to make it short, very, very short. very delicate. Just a hint, a hint of space. Because we already have stereo image in the highs created by the flanger, which are alternating, you know, between left and right channels. And now we have some stereo image in the, in the mid frequencies by the reverb and the bass is mono. The sub frequencies are mono, which is good because that's gonna give us the most punch and no problems with mixing this later. Let's listen. Pretty sweet. Uh, one thing we're missing is the call flanger is not automated. It's going on a free run. And there's a new feature implemented that I asked for, another one, sorry, where you can pause the internal LFO and you have completely manual control over what is happening here, which is fabulous. Because right now we can do uh, automation, processor automation, call flanger, mod depth, and play. We can make our own. We can, you can see now the pattern of the flanger is repeatable. So we can do whatever we want. and it's gonna stay with the time relation to everything else we put here. This is, of course, too aggressive and it doesn't sound very good. But this sounds better. Awesome, great. Now, if we want to duplicate this, it's a bit tricky because what I would normally do, if I don't have all this automation, I would just go click, shift D, enter, and I would have it, bam. But we don't have the automation. Also, there is another handful hotkey, which is Alt D, and it duplicates it once without asking questions. I didn't know that. I learned that on Sonic Convention. But this doesn't work, so I'm gonna save the session, by the way. So we can select all of that, when, while in the grab mode, with access with the G key, we can do Control C, then make sure that this guy is set on playhead. Set your playhead at the beginning where you wanna paste it and then go Control V and it'll paste it. And as you can see, it missed some spots. It didn't paste the the automation, one automation, where it should paste it. So that's a problem. And now if I delete this, uh, it doesn't follow because it's not bind to 
this. Maybe the problem was with this one guy. I don't know. Okay, let's try again. Let's go with G. Or maybe if I go R, select a region, copy this, and then paste this. No. What if I select a region and then select these tracks and then copy this? All right, that seems to work too. So we can select a region accessing this range mode. Sorry, range mode. No, yeah, it's a range, not a region. A region is, is this. It's a clip on the timeline. A range is something else. It's just a selected part of the timeline. And tracks. So it's a bit tedious right now. Uh, I asked for some help to make it more streamlined, but it works. All righty. So maybe that's like all the key features covered. Uh, I have no more um, breakthroughs. So let's just have some fun and program maybe a little more sophisticated line for this. Shift Alt Up Arrow transposes by an octave up. Shift Alt Down by an octave down, uh, and just shift up and down just by one semitone. Uh, I want to go E, Edit Mode, and then shrink them. Ah, oh no, this. Control Z. I'm gonna do the same by holding Shift, so I'm not constrained by the grid because some snapped to the grid and some didn't, and it went were ugly. Ah, uh, no, I don't like this at all. I want some. What is it? Free? Yeah. I learned this yesterday that keys three and four on the numeric keypad. On the, on the alphanumeric keypad, can uh, basically switch between grid resolutions. So you can very quickly, you know, dial in more dense grids, if you know this. I didn't. All righty, we have quite a long release for the whole synth, and it blends between our notes. So I want to go to the add synth global envelope and this is that this is the release time now if I reduce this you can hear I wanted to cut off immediately because that's gonna give me precision oh still no no go some I think some note was stuck. It's not, not stuck anymore. Maybe let's try some different thing here. All right, yeah, I'm not very happy with this melody, but the sound is pretty interesting. Growl. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. This is all for today. Uh, this Ardor 5 session will be zipped and available for you to download. The link is in the video description. Um, if you enjoyed it, um, leave a comment, let me know. If you have any questions about this, the Growl basis, Ardor, open source software at, at all, ask them in the comments. If you have any suggestions for what I should cover in the future episodes, also let me know. Make sure to check out my new album, which is out on Bandcamp right now. It's called Suppress, and you can buy it for $3, or you can listen for free. A mix will be on YouTube sometime in the future, but I don't have time to do it yet, because I have lots of different things to do, and that's not a priority. Uh, if you want to support me, you can buy my album on Bandcamp, or you can become a Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you will also get a free copy of this album digitally. Thanks to you all for support for 
watching and for being a great audience. Keep making music. Bye.